This is a teardown of a APC Backups ES350. And this is model BE350R. I got this missing its battery cover and battery, so can't really do anything with it other than recycle it. Normally there'd be a little plastic tab you push down here and the cover goes sideways out. This had a uh, relatively small battery in it, considering. To take these apart, well, I'm going to backtrack. I don't recommend taking these apart beyond this for safety reasons. There is potentially high voltage in here and um, capacitors that may or may not have a charge. I'm kind of doing this at my own risk. I've been taking these things apart for years now. haven't gotten shocked yet. <laughs> I, I don't recommend it though if you're not comfortable with high voltage and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, so there's a handful of really deep Phillips head screws. And these are kind of interesting because they're built really cheaply, but at the same time they're well built, as you'll see. They definitely eliminate a lot of parts in the uh, manufacturing process with this, which kind of helps with the price. I'm going to kind of spoil it, but I am about to open this. Basically what you should see in here is the top and bottom shell, a circuit board, and a transformer. Alright, yeah, I'm taking them all, but... So, I'm taking the bottom shell off now, and there won't be anything in this. This is just a structural piece that supports all the internal stuff. Really nicely made. And here's your battery backup, basically. You've got your transformer, which handles the voltage conversion from the wall. And then this PCB handles the conversion from the battery to your outputs before power goes out. And because I'm going to get friendly with this board, I'm going to put on my probably not electrically safe <laughs> wash, uh, washing gloves that I use to do cleaning. Let's see, actually, I'll get this loose first. So the outlets are basically molded into the top shell. And then... They press in pieces of bent and stamped brass for the contacts. This is the ground contact, which appears to be attached to this uh, back reinforcement plate. But as you see, those brass strips are just pushed into the plastic of the top housing. And that's how you get your, your outlets that you plug into. And we're just going to pull all this out. There we go. Another thing to point out is this really nice strain relief here. I would guess that you're more likely to damage the housing of this unit before you're able to do damage to the cord from where it comes through because fairly substantial groove in that piece of rubber it should be over molted. Yeah, it looks like that's that should be over molded over the cord and pulled out. So the cord was pre-manufactured and then from what it looks like they injection molded the plastic over it for the strain relief. Cause it's not zoom in a little. It's not part of the strain relief. As you can see it pulls away. Doesn't know what to focus on though. <laughs> yeah, really nice strain relief on these things. It's really impressive on what they were able to do to save on costs while making a good quality product. Because like on a lot of the older ones, the housing would have been like a stamped piece of steel and then rather than just using these brass strips as part of, um, it put in the 
sorry, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> Rather than using these brass strips and then pushing them into the housing, they'd connect to actual like, outlets, like the same ones you'd have in your walls. You literally could uh, salvage outlets out of these old battery backups if you wanted to and use them in your walls, because it's literally just the same thing that you buy from the hardware store. With some minor differences, usually they cut off like the mounting tabs and stuff, but anyways. And this does have two sides, so usually on these cheap home units like this, one side is surge protection only, and then one side has battery backup. And obviously it's labeled on the top. Let me get these free. But I believe you should also be able to tell by looking at where the brass strips are coming from. Hmm. I may have misspoken. This one's a little different than I was like, oh wait, yeah. So this brass strip that I'm holding in my hand right now is getting fed from the wall and then goes into the PCB. But the other one, I'm not sure which one's hot, brown or, brown or blue. I think uh, it's a European color scheme. But um, these are being fed straight from the PCB. So that means there's some switching done, probably with this relay here, for when it goes from AC wall power to battery backup, that relay is going to switch and it's going to connect to whatever part of the circuitry here that has the AC output from the battery backup. So it's probably being fed from somewhere this way because this is all the brains. I'm guessing that these transistors here are what kind of help create the sine wave from the battery. I'm not 100% certain on how that all works, but yeah. So battery connects up to this transformer on one end, and then on the other end it goes into the PCB. Oops, right there. It feeds through all that stuff. I'm guessing this is the main voltage in from the wall. And this must be like the neutral out from the transformer then. I'm not sure. Probably shouldn't speculate stuff like that, but uh, that'd be my educated guess. So, yeah, not much to see in these uh, old cheap uh, battery backups. There's a lot more going on with uh, your more commercial grade ones, especially some of the higher end ones that are um, active battery backups where it's actively running off the battery and the line voltage is keeping the batteries at whatever appropriate voltage it is. And then that way there's less switch over time if there's power outage, because there is a brief period. It's not long enough to disrupt most things, but when you're dealing with the higher end battery backups for like large server farms and stuff, they can't afford to take the chance that, that tiny switch over time is gonna disrupt something. But hopefully that's interesting. Thanks for watching.